Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Pradvi. I work for Intel. Uh, my co-presenter Suzanne, who's leading uh, Watchers efforts from Intel, uh, fortunately she couldn't make it. So our talk here is about uh, automating noisy neighbor detection using uh, OpenStack Watcher. So this is the agenda of the talk. Uh, first, I'm gonna uh, talk about what motivated us to come up with this strategy. Uh, what is a noisy neighbor? What is shared resource contention? What is uh, Intel's uh, resource director technology? Uh, why do we need to automate noisy neighbor detection? Uh, what OpenStack Watcher is? How, how can it help us achieve uh, noisy neighbor detection? Uh, what our algorithm is? How it fits into a watcher strategy? And then I'm going to show you a bunch of uh, screenshots and just to show how it worked for us, and some final remarks. OK, so what motivated us to work on uh, this strategy? The very simple answer is uh, resource utilization enhancement. Now that a lot of OpenStack uh, core uh, projects like Nova, Neutron, Cinder, they're very close to maturity. Now you have an OpenStack cloud, which runs fine. Everything works great. But uh, the next question is, everything works fine, but how do I enhance my resource utilization? How do I get the most out of my uh, res cloud resources, which are already there? And that's the reason why uh, work workload placement is uh, very important. It's like a game of Tetris. You need to look at all the aspects while placing your workloads on various servers to get the most out of it. Uh, we already know a few ways to uh, enhance uh, resource utilization, like job packing or cluster over subscription, but uh, a lot of these uh, uh, methods are not very easy to implement. It completely depends on the data center, its use cases, and it has its own, own, own set of cons. So. What is a noisy neighbor? So when we have more than one VM or an application on a server, uh, a lot of VMs, they fight for resources. There is a lot of resource contention that's happening uh, below the table. And uh, so when you have two VMs, and uh, each VM is fighting for its own set of uh, resources, like cache, L3 cache, or uh, CPU cycles, each uh, resource, uh, each uh, VM is going to affect the other VM's performance in a negative way, of course. It leads to performance degradation. Completely depends on the scenario. And uh, let me just explain this with a very simple example. Say you have a server uh, with just two VMs on it. You have a web application which uses some web services, and each VM has a web service. Say one web service is very important, like uh, uh, like like a payment uh, web service for your web application, and the other uh, web service on the other VM is just some add-on to your site, like uh, say image morphing. So, which is not really important, but it needs a lot of computational power. And uh, when your image uh, when your image morphing thing runs, it's gonna try to draw all the resources towards itself, which is going to affect your very important uh, service, which is your payment service. So this is something which we want to avoid. And this is a very uh, simple example of a noisy neighbor. So to put in uh, formal terms, uh, when application performance is greatly, uh, in a negative way, affected by a co-locating application, you have a situation called noisy neighbor. and Noisy neighbor is the application which is overutilizing the resource and which is leading to a performance degradation of a very important uh, or a high priority VM. OK. Let me uh, put noisy neighbor aside for a few minutes and let me talk about what uh, Intel Resource Director technology is. So. So uh, as I've just told you, uh, you have a lot of resource contention going on. And one of those resources are, uh, is uh, LLC, last level cache, or L3 cache. And uh, this L3 cache has a direct, uh, 
it has it is directly proportional to uh, your the performance of your vm so intel rdt is a technology where uh, you can monitor or allocate l3 cache on the go on the go on the fly uh, right on spot and you can also monitor uh, memory bandwidth on a per vm or a per core basis uh, let's just uh, focus on cmt which is cache monitoring technology uh, because that's very relevant to our strategy over here so uh, uh, using intel's uh, cmt technology what you can do is you can uh, know the amount of l3 cache utilized by an, by by a vm or or by a single core or by a single app uh, right on spot at that point of time so using this you can come up with some strategies when your when your high priority application is getting very little of this you can uh, try to kill kill other applications i'll just come uh, come to that in the next few slides but yeah uh, cmt is what we're using and uh, so telemetry is a uh, very important aspect to understand how uh, how well your uh, resources are uh, utilized in your cloud so and a lot of times uh, this telemetry is limited to compute or uh, network or uh, storage uh, but but actually if you if you can get telemetry all uh, all from the silicon level that's going to help you in understanding your, uh, in understanding your cloud better and uh, it can help in uh, intelligent workload placements you can come up with strategies where you can minimize resource contention and you can come up with strategies where, where there's continuous resource optimization. Okay, uh, so by now, you know the, our problem here is noisy neighbors. That is something which, are, which we are trying to uh, solve. And uh, you know, you must have guessed by now, Intel RDT is the tool which we are using to solve this, but we need a, uh, some other component to fit into this jigsaw and to help us use RDT to automate noisy neighbor detection. And that is OpenStack Watcher. Uh, so for the next few minutes and in the next few slides, I'm going to explain you what OpenStack Watcher is because it's very important to understand how Watcher works to understand our strategy. And uh, uh, I'm quite sure a lot of people in this room uh, do not very well know what OpenStack Watcher is or what it does. So, so uh, OpenStack Watcher is a flexible uh, resource optimization service for your OpenStack-based clouds. It's a service used to optimize your uh, uh, resources in an automatic fashion. Uh, so what Watcher does is it audits your cloud against a set of uh, predefined uh, optimization algorithms. And uh, based on that, uh, it comes up with some strategies which it presents to a cloud admin, uh, which he has the power to uh, apply directly using Watcher C uh, CLI. So, uh, yeah, uh, so Watcher has a set of goals and a set of strategies. So, all you if you're if you if you are your OpenStack admin, right? All you need to do is set a goal. And set a, and map that goal to a strategy, and just leave it. And uh, Watcher does behind the scene jobs to achieve that goal using uh, the rules defined in those strategies. So, uh, OpenStack Watcher is a part of uh, uh, OpenStack Big Tent right now. So, yay. So, let me explain uh, how Watcher fits into uh, the OpenStack. Ecosystem. So, yeah, works. So, so these are your core set of uh, OpenStack services. Hope you guys can see uh, OpenStack services, and uh, these are your uh, monitoring services. Uh, you have Slameter. You can use Nuki, or you can use Monasca. And then uh, these services uh, they feed off all the metrics to Watcher. And Watcher, based on based on the goal and uh, based on the strategy you have used, uh, it does something to optimize your cloud to reach that goal using that strategy. And the really cool thing here is we also have a pluggable uh, analysis tool. Uh, feed, uh, what you can do is you can feed off uh, all this 
all these metrics from new key to a third party uh, uh, big data analysis tool or whatever tool it is, you can, uh, I mean, data scientists can work on, uh, they can do their own big data analysis, they, ca they can come up with their own stuff, and using those numbers, they can again feed, uh, feed the information to Watcher, and Watcher can uh, pick up everything from that third party data analysis tool, and it uses that data to uh, optimize your cloud. So, uh, so if you're using uh, uh, Collect D, which is which has a RDT plugin to get these silicon level telemetry from your uh, from directly from your processor, and that's passed to uh, a Collect D daemon, which again passes passes it to Silometer, and once it does in Silometer, Watcher just uh, takes it from there. So. So this is the uh, workflow of uh, Watcher first that uh, monitors your cloud, I mean, via Silometer and other monitoring services, and uh, then it analyzes, uh, it takes aggregate flows of events and does some kind of analysis, and uh, it profiles your VMs, and based on a set of uh, cost model uh, objective and your constraints of your cloud, it comes up with some optimization schemes, and those schemes are presented you know, in the form of action plans. So action plans has a set of actions which uh, Watcher is saying, these are the actions you need to do to achieve these goals. And uh, I mean, you can automate it or you can, uh, a, cloud, a cloud admin can run it manually. I mean, I'll come to that later. And uh, I mean, if you want to, auto, uh, whatever way it is, if when, you are, when you're trying to apply it, you can use, uh, Watchers apply a component to apply those set of actions. Okay. Uh, so before I actually uh, talk about uh, our noisy neighbor algorithm, uh, let me. I just want to tell you that uh, there are a few. Uh, Algorithms already in place to detect noisy neighbors, like uh, uh, like uh, simple threshold algorithms where uh, where a VM uh, crosses a threshold and you rate it as a noisy neighbor. But there are there are a lot of disadvantages to that. Uh, like let me just explain that. So say you have the same uh, example which which I was explaining previously. Say you have your uh, payment uh, payment uh, payment web service running in a VM and uh, Say uh, that VM is hogging a lot of L3 cache, LLC. So if you use any typical algorithm which is already in place, it's going to identify that as, uh, as a noisy neighbor because it's taking too much of resources and uh, other VMs do not have enough resources. So it's going to identify that as a noisy neighbor and it's going to try to move that or kill that or stuff like that. But that is not something which you would want if that is a very important application. So uh, we have come up with something called uh, job priority, since, I mean, uh, not all jobs in data center are equal anyway. So uh, you can pass a job priority uh, to an instance as a part of instance metadata, and Watcher picks it up from there. So uh, there are a few uh, uh, silicon level metrics which I was talking about, which you can use uh, to detect a noisy neighbor, like. Uh, like uh, L3 cache, uh, IPC, and if you want to split IPC, you can just see the uh, number of instructions ex executed by a VM or the number of CPU cycles a, a VM is taking. But, uh, but as a scope of this uh, strategy, uh, we're going to focus on uh, uh, L3 cache. Uh, we already are working on algorithms. In fact, we have few algorithms ready uh, which are using other, other set of parameters, but uh, we've still not upstreamed it. A lot of testing is being done because testing this is a real pain. It's not easy to understand all those uh, silicon level stuff, so. Uh, so this is our algorithm. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the algorithm which we have upstreamed. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's already in, uh, an OpenStack uh, Watchers repo, and uh, 
you can look at it there, but uh, so this is a very straightforward algorithm. Uh, what we are doing is we are we are going through uh, we are looking through all nodes in a in your OpenStack cloud, and we are going through all VMs per each node, and we are identifying a, a victim VM and an aggressor VM. So a victim VM is a VM, uh, typically a high priority VM uh, that is being affected by a noisy neighbor. And an ag aggressor VM is a noisy neighbor, which is typically a low priority VM, which is trying to mess up your uh, other VMs, other high priority VMs. So once we identify a noisy neighbor, uh, we look at uh, all, the, all the remaining nodes in your cloud, and we come up with, uh, we look at nodes which do not have uh, any priority VMs or any priority applications, and, uh, and if the node is, uh, has enough resources to accommodate this noisy neighbor, we uh, line migrate them to, uh, to that node. And, uh, the whole thing is, again, automated by Watcher. Uh, I'm going to explain how this is done in the next few slides. So uh, to identify a VM which is being affected by a noisy neighbor, which is also your victim VM, so to do this, what we do is we go to every node, and in every node, we try to see all VMs in the decreasing order of their priority, so that we can f we first go through all high priority VMs in the beginning. And uh, if we see any dip in uh, L3 cache, LLC of, of any VM, uh, which is, if, if the dip is beyond the threshold, and this threshold uh, can be passed as a, a command line parameter when you're setting the strategy. And uh, so when there is any uh, dip in in your LLC, which is beyond this threshold, we mark it as a potential victim VM. We're still not sure if, a, if it is actually a victim VM because we are not sure what caused the dip. We are not sure if, it's, if the dip, uh, dip is because uh, other, other VMs are trying to uh, take up uh, LLC at that point of time. So we just uh, mark it as a, a potential victim VM. And uh, then, what we do is we, we start identifying a noisy neighbor in that, uh, in that specific node. So we go through all, all the VMs in uh, reverse order of their priority, from uh, lower priority to higher priority, and we try to look if there is any VM uh, which, tried, well, if, which tried to take too much of L3 cache uh, in the same period of time where our potential victim VM has lost L3 cache. So, uh, so if, if we identify a spike which is beyond the threshold and in the same, uh, if, if it falls in the same time period as, as your uh, priority VMs dip in uh, LLC usage, then we know for sure that uh, there is something wrong with this, uh, and this is somehow affecting your priority VM. So we mark this as a noisy neighbor, and uh, what we, once we mark this as a noisy neighbor, we, we're going to go to... Uh, uh, go through all nodes in your cloud, see for any, uh, any nodes where there are no priority VMs, and uh, see for nodes which have enough resources to uh, accommodate your uh, noisy neighbor. And we live-migrate uh, 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 live migrate this VM to that node. So, uh, so this, all this sounds, uh, I mean, uh, complicated and a little tiresome, but uh, an admin has to do nothing. All he needs to do is run a watcher goal and strategy, and all of this is done behind the scenes. So, so let me talk about two, uh, two uh, modes of uh, watcher, which is a one-shot mode and a continuous mode. So, so, I mean, sometimes an admin can have no confidence in what watcher does. I mean, you can't blame the admin. It's a new thing, and you, you just can't let watcher uh, change all your... Uh, Cloud, uh, cloud maps and uh, your entire cloud setup. So, so what, what a one-shot uh, mode in Watcher does is uh, an admin can request, uh, request uh, this audit to be run. And once the audit is completed, once Watcher comes up with your optimization schemes based on, uh, based on the strategy which we have set, uh, it, it, 
an action plan is created, and this action plan is presented to the admin. And the, this action plan might have a simple action like kill a VM or migrate a VM, or it might have some, a set of complicated actions like move this VM here, move this VM here, move this VM there, and this is how you, you're going to optimize your cloud. So, uh, I mean, uh, an action plan has a, a set of actions, and uh, an, ad, uh, an admin can see what each action is. I'm going to show you in the next few slides how to do that. And so, so this is the one-shot mode. And once an admin is fine with all the actions, he can just apply the action plan uh, with a single command. So uh, this is the one-shot mode I'm talking about. And this is not always uh, viable, because an admin can't always keep uh, running this for every 1,000 seconds or one hour or whatever, whatever the time period is. So we have a continuous mode in uh, Watcher where all you need to do is set a goal and strategy and just leave it. So what happens is, after every x amount of period of, x, uh, period of time, and this X can be set by the admin. Uh, your watch, watcher runs an audit on your entire cloud, and it comes up with an action plan with a bunch of actions, and it's going to automatically apply this action plan. And, uh, and your uh, VMs are migrated or killed or whatever, and then after, after, again, after again X amount of seconds or X amount of time, this thing is again done. So identifying a noisy neighbor is not, uh, not a one, uh, one uh, audit cycle task. It, it takes a bunch of audits, and it takes time to understand how each uh, application or each VM is using uh, LLC. And uh, based on that, over a period of time, over a period of audit cycles, your, uh, VM, uh, your uh, node can move from a noisy state to a noiseless state. And uh, once it is in a noiseless state, uh, uh, it's, uh, that's, that's what we want, because your priority VM gets whatever it needs. It's not going to be choked for resources, and things run fine. So uh, this is uh, a plot of L3 cache with time of, of four VMs on a node. And uh, this was taken uh, before running Watcher. So, uh, and uh, on the contr uh, if you can see, instance one is actually the, the red one, which is a uh, high priority VM. And you can see uh, this is the L3 cache consumption uh, of that, which is not really good. I mean, uh, you have instances two, three, and four, which are hogging more cache. I mean, it might be completely up to the, there, there is a chance that uh, all this is happening is because instance one just needs that. But uh, since I've, uh, I've done these tests, I know I've run the same amount of load and all. So this is not something that's good. And the most important aspect over here is uh, the whole noise over here. I mean, uh, I mean uh, it's all noisy. Every VM is fighting for the cache it wants. And uh, the whole uh, ma uh, graph you can see is not uh, clear, and it's a bit noisy. So uh, I have some uh, screenshots of uh, uh, how a Watcher is run in the next few slides, uh, so that you guys have an idea how easy it is to run Watcher and how, how Watcher looks. So uh, you have a goal list and a, you have a goal list and a strategy list. So these are some uh, predefined. Uh, set of goals, uh, workload balancing. If you have too many uh, VMs, I mean, you can uh, balance all the, all the VMs uh, using this strategy. You have server cons consolidation, thermal optimization. And uh, these are the strategies where you can map each node, uh, each goal. So, so have a therm thermal optimization goal, and I can map it to a thermal optimization uh, strategy, which is this. Yeah, I thought there was something wrong. But anyway, uh, coming back to noisy neighbor, so this is the goal we need to uh, use, and uh, this is the strategy that we need to use. So all you need to do is run, uh, create an audit template and run an audit uh, uh, with uh, goal as noisy neighbor and strategy as noisy neighbor. And, uh, and uh, an action plan is created uh, like this. 
So, so I've run this in a, a one-shot mode so that I can show you how uh, Watcher uh, shows the action plans and a set of actions. And uh, so if you see uh, this, right, 7C53, whatever, uh, this is the UUID of the action plan that was created. And it says this is recommended by Watcher. So now the admin has an option to go through what this is. So, so if, if you see the action list, right? So this is the action that was created, and you can see it is mapped to this action plan, which is 7C53, which I just showed you that was created, which was the recommended one. And now if you want to see what this action is, what is this, what, I mean, what did, uh, What's the goal of running this noisy neighbor strategy? And this is, this is, the, this is how you see uh, what Watcher has suggested. And you see over here, the destination node is 38. Uh, migration type is live. You have a source node, which is 39, I guess. Yep. And resource ID, which is this, which is the UUID of your instance. So Watcher is saying move this instance from this node to that node in order to reduce your uh, noisiness in, the, uh, in, the, in your node. So uh, just to, uh, to run the action plan, uh, all you need to do is Watcher action, action plan start with the ID and boom, everything's done behind the scenes and uh, you have your uh, you have your host where migration, live migration has started, and once, once the, uh, this live migration has been completed, uh, uh, this was the, uh, I mean, one of the instances out right now, and uh, you can see uh, this is what the LT cache uh, uh, graph looks like right now. And I'm not saying uh, this is noise, noises, or uh, there is still a lot of noise, you still do not know, uh, uh, if uh, these VM, VMs are affecting this. So this is right after one cycle, because I, uh, I wanted to show you how it looks after, every, uh, after a cycle. And over a period of time, right, over a bunch of cycles, uh, it's supposed to move towards a uh, noise state. So uh, this is the summary slide. I've, uh, so I've showed you uh, how to automate uh, noisy neighbor uh, detection and mitigation using uh, OpenStack Watcher, and it's all uh, automated. And uh, you have uh, Intel's RDT, which is being used for this, uh, which can directly introduce hardware hooks to monitor and allocate uh, uh, per thread, or uh, I mean, uh, allocate resources on a per thread or a per VM basis. And, uh, so this is something which we are working on right now, which is going to be released soon. So right now, this strategy, all this strategy does is uh, uh, look at cache and then uh, try to change your cloud map based on that. But uh, Intel RDT also gives you a feature called cache allocation technology. So all these things are, uh, av I think, available in the latest uh, line of uh, Xeon family. I think uh, that's what's used in almost all the data centers right now. Uh, so, so what this cache allocation uh, tool does is, uh, so when you, you can actually allocate or restrict or reduce the amount of uh, last level cache right on spot. So say if your high priority VM is not getting enough LLC or enough of any other uh, silicon level uh, resources, so, all, uh, I mean, uh, using Watcher, using the, strat uh, the strategies which, which we are coming up with, you can on-spot allocate more uh, LLC to uh, that VM, and then you can, uh, you can reduce or uh, live migrate other bunch of noisy VMs. So, so that we haven't upstreamed yet. We are working on it. A lot of testing is being done on this. And uh, so one more... Uh, one more uh, thing which we want to investigate is how to bring in uh, other, uh, other uh, silicon level metrics into pictures. Like, uh, I mean, I have LLC, that's fine, but I want to bring in IPC, I want to bring in uh, CPU cycles, I want to bring in uh, other stuff uh, and put, put all of them into one algorithm or a bunch of algorithms uh, based on the uh, a set of 
very common scenarios in data center and use all of them to uh, automate your uh, noisy neighbor detection and ultimately uh, enhance uh, resource utilization of your cloud. Uh, so that's it. Uh, this was automating noisy neighbor detection. Uh, so if you have any questions, I know. Uh, OK, I see someone already standing there. Yeah. I've got two questions. The first question is, uh, what version of OpenStack are you doing this with? What's the requirement? Is there a okay. micro version specific requirement for any of this, uh, et cetera? So for Watcher, uh, there is no OpenStack requirement. I mean, it's there in Okata. It's th I, I think it's there from Meta uh, uh, Newton. Actually, a while before that. So I mean, as long as you're having uh, your uh, latest version of OpenStack, I think uh, this should work. But you have you need to have uh, some specific libraries to get uh, specific versions of libraries to get uh, these silicon uh, metrics. And one of them, if you're if you're using libvirt, uh, you need libvirt 3.0.0. Okay, that's yes, that's okay, cool. Yeah, and here we have used collectd, so that's one more. I mean, you can uh, that's an alternative to libvirt, and uh, collectd directly pushes uh, metrics to accelerometer. I mean, yeah. Okay, second question, um, or more of an observation. So in my experience, I'm an operator yeah. uh, at uh, Charter Communications. We've almost always found it much easier to leave the noisy neighbor where it is and move its, move its other neighbors, the nice neighbors, away. It's almost impossible to migrate a noisy neighbor successfully. So okay. bear that in mind, people okay. in the audience. Yeah, I mean, as as I've told you, this is something which uh, we which we are uh, experience, uh, which we are experimenting, and uh, this is something which actually worked for us. I mean, at least the scenarios where we've uh, tested it, moving a noisy neighbor away to a node is actually uh, th that worked out better for us. We are still coming up with more strategies. Uh, we're going to upstream them soon, and uh, I mean, obviously, uh, feedback like this is valued, so uh, we can come up with. Uh, better strategies. And in fact, uh, uh, Watcher is written in a way that uh, anyone can write a new goal and a new strategy. So, so if you think for your data center, that's the strategy that works. Just define a goal, define a strategy, you can use it. And if you upstream it, uh, I mean, anyone else can use that. So that's great. So I see that Watcher has the ability to either automatically take actions or to just advise what actions to take. Are there any sort of hooks that you know of or maybe an automated way to say, you know, I don't want it to actually do this automated action, but I want it to advise and maybe like send something out to pager duty to wake somebody up to look at that advise action plan? So are there like hooks to external or any way for external things to kind of hook in to be triggered off of that, do you know? Yeah, we are actually working on that right now, that's some, something which came into our discussion yesterday. So uh, some people uh, said uh, they wanted to link this with Congress or uh, a bunch of other uh, OpenStax uh, projects. Uh, so one uh, drawback of that is uh, not everyone uses every service. So if, if we completely move towards uh, uh, calling, making Congress APIs or something, you need to have Congress in your OpenStack uh, and not just the basic services and watcher. So that is one drawback, but uh, uh, we are still working on that. And uh, uh, in fact, we are trying to work on uh, how to optimize containers and, uh, and how to make external calls. Uh, we, uh, we are seeing if we can write some uh, classes where uh, you can directly uh, add whatever you want to, uh, uh, whatever external APIs you want to uh, call, and then whatever data you get, you can directly feed it off to. Uh, is that, that kind of like a, like a plug-in yes. architecture? Yeah, so it's, again, uh, this is something which we discussed yesterday, and uh, we, that, I mean, since a lot of, uh, I mean, it's not just you, we've got a bunch of feedback about this, so uh, pretty, uh, pretty soon we are going to uh, come up with a blueprint and then uh, implement that, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, you sure? Okay.